with Young Justice. It's where teen superheroes transform from sidekicks to center stage. Get ready for jaw-dropping villain showdowns, mind-blowing twists, and intense internal battles as we cover this thrilling journey from start to end. In this DC Universe epic, spanning four action-packed seasons, they're not just honing combat skills, they're mastering leadership. Can they step up and outshine the legends of Batman and Superman? But first, let's paint a backdrop for our young heroes, shall we? Picture a world where every shadow could hide cosmic dangers and every alliance faces tests from earthly streets to interstellar battles. In the vast DC universe, secrets and epic adventures await at every turn. Meet Aqualad, a leader whose calm surface makes a whirlpool of secrets challenging his very identity. Robin, the protege of the Dark Knight, not only faces enemies in dark alleys, but also battles personal demons and the burden of legacy. Kid Flash, with his lightning speed, learns that some challenges can't be outrun, especially his own complexities. Great, he's gone ballistic again! Superboy, grappling with Superman's legacy, finds himself torn between two worlds, eagerly searching for a place to belong. But where does he truly fit in? Oh, no Commander, the threat ends. Miss Martian, hiding her true alien nature, navigates a path filled with emotional and intergalactic challenges. And Artemis, an expert archer whose sharp aim is matched only by the family secrets she harbors. Secrets that might just change everything. As they embark on covert missions and face formidable forces, the ties that bind them are tested. But will they emerge stronger or be pulled apart by the secrets they keep? The journey is filled with twists, turns, and shocking revelations. Let's dive into the heart of these mysteries, starting with episode 1. In Independence Day, excitement buzzes as sidekicks Robin, Speedy, Aqualad, and Kid Flash gear up to join the Justice League. Today is the day. Welcome to the Hall of Justice. Headquarters of the Justice League. But uh-oh, their big day at the Hall of Justice turns sour when they're sidelined during a secret Justice League meeting. Speedy, clearly upset, spills the beans about a secret space base, the Watchtower, and storms off. What could happen next? Left behind, our trio can't sit still. They zoom off to Project Cadmus, craving some hero action. Sneaking in, they show off their cool moves. Robin swinging with his grappling hook, Kid Flash zipping up walls, and Aqualad making waves with his water power. But hold on, things get weirder down below. No, nothing odd going on here. They bump into spooky G trolls and a secret project named Blockbuster. Yikes! Just when they think they've seen it all, bam! They find Project KR, a Superman clone. But it's not all cheers and high fives. The clone, tricked by mind controlling G genomes, knocks them flat. Ouch! How'd they get out of this one? Keep watching. In fireworks, Kid Flash, Robin, and Aqualad are trapped in a cell with Superboy, aka Project KR. They've been captured by Dr. Desmond, who plans to clone them. What should I do with them? Clone them. But plot twist, Superboy, moved by Aqualad's hero talk, helps them break free. They fight through crazy genomorphs and escape through the vents. But are they truly safe yet? Then Desmond drinks a vial of the blockbuster formula and morphs into a hulking monster. Yikes! After an epic battle, our young heroes triumph, even as the building collapses. The Justice League arrives, and surprise, they see Superboy and Superman super awkward with him. Batman, who's not quite happy with the sidekicks, eventually gives them a base, the Secret Sanctuary. Wow! They now have mentors and a new member, Miss Martian, the niece of the popular Martian Manhunter. Meanwhile, the light watches hoping to take advantage at the right opportunity. In Drop Zone, Young Justice embarks on a stealth mission to Santa Presca, a hotbed for the notorious muscle drug Venom. But wait, big twist! The island's new overlords, the Cult of Cobra, are making an even stronger variant, Cobra Venom. The team sneaks into the drug lab, but oh no, it's a wild showdown! Kid Flash and Robin are all about who's the top dog while Bane, the island's ex-boss, 
plays sneaky, offering a secret entry. Chaos ensues, the team against the cultists. But here's the real shocker. Robin thinks Aqualad should be the boss, and the team agrees. With amazing teamwork, You know he's the one. We all do. Hello, Megan. It's so obvious. With amazing teamwork, they outsmart Sportsmaster, a key player for the light, turning his helicopter into a fireworks show. His big purchase of Cobra Venom goes kaboom. Batman's waiting with some tough love, but hey, he's kinda proud. And guess what? Somewhere in the shadows, the light is grumbling about her heroes. Take that, villains. In school, it's pandemonium in Metropolis as a bridge goes kaput. Superman and Superboy dive in to help, but they're like a cat and dog duo, not meshing well. I had that. I didn't want to take the chance. As it is, your landing could have destabilized the entire bridge. Batman, with a keen eye, observes from far away. At headquarters, Black Canary is in boss mode, teaching her heroes that smarts trump muscle. Superboy, headstrong and feisty, gets a lesson in strategy from Canary herself. Things take a wild turn with a surprise attack by kooky robot monkeys. The monkeys during a top secret mission. What's next? Superboy, feeling bold, faces Professor Ivo and his fearsome android Amazo in a solo showdown at Gotham Academy. Is there a deeper mystery? Batman's post-mission chat hints at Superboy and Superman's bumpy bond. Plus, a mystery arrow flies in mid-battle. Who's the secret archer? Superboy, a bit bruised in ego but wiser, jumps back into training. His character development is still in progress. An infiltrator, Red Arrow, once called Speedy, saves Dr. Rocket from the sneaky League of Shadows. Cut to the Young Justice team having fun, while Kid Flash suffers through his first day of sophomore year. Talk about bad timing. His bad luck doesn't end, and he fumbles his first impression with the new arrow slinging teammate, Artemis. Uh, who is this? Artemis, your new teammate. Kid Flash, never heard of you. Suddenly, Red Arrow crashes the party with news of a spooky nanotech weapon, the Fog, ready to wreak havoc. The team's new mission, protect Rocket while she whips up a virus to zap the Fog. Things get wild. They face Professor Ojo and some crafty assassins, including the elusive Cheshire, rooftop tussles, and poolside scuffles. It's action galore with a dash of teamwork magic. After some oopsies and brave moves, Rocket's virus works. The fog is history. <gasps> yes! The infiltrators have been outfiltrated. Artemis has a bumpy welcome, with Red Arrow skeptical of her past. And just when they think they're safe, hold up, there's a mole in the team? In targets, Red Arrow, our arrow slinging hero, crashes a tense peace summit between North and South Relasia to foil Cheshire's assassination scheme. Surprise! But wait, who's the real target here? Oh, it's Lex Luthor everyone's favorite controversial billionaire. You may have everyone here fooled, Luther, but I know what you are. Meanwhile, Superboy and Miss Martian are trying out high school life. Imagine aliens and super teens juggling classes and after-school activities. Miss Martian even gets a splashy cheerleader welcome while Superboy faces typical teen dramas. Back at the summit, things heat up. A tea ceremony turns into an epic battle with Cheshire and Sportsmaster, and Red Arrow and Aqualad are all in. They're duking it out with the sneaky League of Shadows. Not bad, lad. Better than your team did ascent to Prisca or Bialya. The episode ends with a bang, a treaty gets signed, whispers of a mole in the team stir up drama, and Red Arrow kinda sorta starts to respect the young Justice. And oh, there's Lex Luthor and Ra's al Ghul, cooking up something sinister. What are they plotting now? In Homefront, Artemis is daydreaming about her sister Jade, but school life at Gotham Academy snaps her back to reality. And who's there? None other than Dick Grayson, aka Robin, snapping a surprise pick. Uh, who's that? A freshman, ignore him. At the cave, love is in the air for Miss Martian and Superboy. But uh oh, Red Tornado and Aqualad are fretting over a possible mole in the team. Then things get fiery. Artemis and Robin face a red hot ambush at the cave. They're up against rogue androids and have to save their friends from super sticky traps. Nine minutes and 45 seconds. In the midst of this craziness, Artemis spots a familiar arrow and uses it, along an EMP device to turn the table. Boom. But hold on, Red Tornado suddenly turns on them. What's up with him? After all that, Artemis wakes up to Superman's voice, surrounded by the Justice League. Red Tornado and the androids? Poof, gone. 
An alpha male, Gotham's Mayor Hales, ordinary tiger hunt turns upside down with what? Armed gorillas and mysterious pylons. The Young Justice team is also dealing with a heap of drama, like Red Tornado's supposed betrayal and Aqualad keeping mum about a potential mole. The possibility of a mole within the team. In light of last night's attack, Tornado would appear to be the traitor. Batman, ever the cool guy, sends the team to check out these bizarre gorilla attacks. And boy, do things get wild. They split up and battle mind-controlled animals wearing fancy inhibitor collars. Think rampaging elephants and soaring vultures. Things get even crazier when Captain Marvel is captured by a literal brain and his gorilla sidekick. Deal with the central girls. I can handle more Capitans by an extraction myself. But worry not, our heroes pull together some jaw-dropping teamwork and foil the villain's plan. After the dust settles, what new friendship forms? Superboy makes a furry friend in Wolf, the team agrees Aqualad's still the boss, and Captain Marvel, who's actually the young Billy Batson, wraps up his day with a magical Shazam! In Revelation, things get wild as giant plants start popping up in cities, thanks to the naughty Injustice League. What's their demand? If you wish to save them, a ransom of 10 billion American dollars is required. 10 billion dollars or else. Back at HQ, Batman and the others fill in the team about these crazy plant attacks, all linked to Cobra Venom. The adventure zooms to the Louisiana Bayou, where heroes face off against the Injustice League's leafy chaos. Meanwhile, the Justice League is dealing with similar green giants globally. And guess who's loving the mayhem? The Joker with his cybernetic tricks. I've had practice juggling my multiple personalities. <laughs> the team takes on the enemies, but uh-oh, things get desperate. Aqualad puts on a helmet, turning into Dr. Fate and saving everyone. The Justice League swoops in and Batman takes down the Joker, while Dr. Fate cleans up the poison gas. Batman gives a small nod to the team's work. But wait, what's Vandal Savage's hidden agenda? His evil plans remain a mystery. In humanity, Tio Maro, the tricky inventor, has grand schemes for Red Tornado and his robot siblings. Meanwhile, at Mount Justice, enter Zatanna, the new girl with a magical flair, making Robin's heart skip a beat. The team, still under Justice League watch, hatches a plan to find Red Tornado and Maro. If he searched for Tornado and Maro in every logical location, if we're gonna do better, we need an illogical solution. But wait, there's a twist. Maro's latest robot, Red Volcano, goes rogue, revealing Maro himself is an android. The team, with Zatanna in tow, whoops, sets off on a stealth mission to foil Maro's villainous plot. They face off against Red Volcano, who's dead set on causing a volcanic catastrophe. It's a heart-pounding battle, and Red Tornado and his siblings sacrifice themselves to stop the eruption. As things wind down, a saved Red Tornado shows his softer side, caring for his creator. Meanwhile, Zatanna finds herself in hot water for joining the fray. Yikes. What'll the Justice League think about this? In failsafe, a spaceship barrels towards Earth, outsmarting the Justice League and turning them into Stardust. Disaster strikes hero after hero, leaving the young team to brave the chaos. I must join the League. We will protect the planet at all costs and cover an alien ship chilling near Superman's secret arctic spot, totally surprising Superboy. Hold your breath, they hatch a plan, kicking it into action. But heartache strikes, Artemis gets zapped. The young heroes regroup, mourning and strategizing. At the Hall of Justice, they find Martian Manhunter playing an epic game of hide and seek, and they learn the Disintegrator Ray is a teleporter. Hope reignites. This thing doesn't disintegrate, it teleports. Artemis is alive! But the suspense isn't over yet. Aliens attack again. Despite their gutsy efforts, Aqualad and others get teleported. At Mount Justice, Robin steps up to lead a bold attack on the mothership. But here's the kicker. The Ray isn't a teleporter, it's deadly. Robin and Kid Flash make a brave ultimate move, and Miss Martian is heartbroken she lost all of her friends. Plot twist, a second mothership appears, but then Martian Manhunter then dispatches his niece. Here is another surprise. It's all a simulation controlled by Martian Manhunter, gone haywire because his niece's subconscious took over. The team wakes up, shaken, and Miss Martian feels guilty. But just how strong is she? In misplaced, Clarion the Witch Boy and his magical crew cast a spell. Poof, all adults disappear. This leaves Billy Batson, aka Captain Marvel, in a real pickle. If I change, I could disappear too. 
If he transforms, he might vanish too. But wait, there's more. At the cave, the young heroes are scratching their heads. Miss Martian and Superboy jump into rescue mode, while Robin and Zatanna try to solve this wild puzzle. Zatanna, hesitant about her magic powers, hunts down the source of this craziness. Over at Mount Justice, Billy's scrambling to connect with other heroes. When he switches to Captain Marvel, surprise, he finds Batman and Zatara, but no young team. Zatara, wait. Captain, where have you been? On a world without grown-ups. He realizes there are two worlds now, one for the grown-ups and one for the kiddos. Here's the big moment. With Captain Marvel playing messenger, the team and adults whip up a plan. They face off with Clarion, who is a tough cookie. In a bold move, Zatanna puts on the mighty Helmet of Fate, but then Clarion zips away. Next, Zatanna's dad, Zatara, makes a big sacrifice, becoming Dr. Fate to save her. What happens next? The worlds merge back, and a sad Zatanna moves into the cave. Meanwhile, the baddies are secretly cheering. Their chaos was a perfect distraction for a sneaky theft. This episode was a blast, but Zatanna's situation really hits home. It's tough when good intentions lead to tragic outcomes, like losing a loved one. Ever been in a similar spot? Share your story below. Now back to the adventure. In Cold Hearted, it's Kid Flash's birthday, and he's jazzed for the surprise party he totally expects out of the cave. The team jumps out, surprise, and he fakes shock. But Robin's not fooled, is he? Kid Flash is hoping for a birthday kiss from Miss Martian, but his heart sinks when Artemis lets slip that she's with Superboy. <laughs> oh, man! Then Batman, in total Batman style, calls everyone for a mission in polar stealth suits against ice fortresses, causing weird winter weather. Kid Flash is bummed he's not with the League, but instead he's got a super important heart delivery mission. Racing against the clock, Kid Flash faces a curveball from Vandal Savage, who wastes his time. Hold on, feeling a sense of deja vu with this mission? It's a clever throwback to The Flash number 1 from 1987, where Kid Flash faces a similar challenge. A smart homage by the Young Justice writers, right? Anyway, back to the story. While the team is battling those crazy ice fortresses, Kid Flash discovers he's been duped in a sneaky plot by Count Vertigo to grab the throne. As a member of the Vladivan royal family, I have immunity diplomatic. Using his smarts, Kid Flash saves the day and Queen Perdita. But that's not all. He even catches Vertigo's evil plan on tape. Back at the Batcave, Batman and Flash are crossing off ice villain suspects. Kid Flash ends his birthday realizing the best gift was Perdita's thankful smile. Talk about a birthday to remember, but what's looming on the horizon? In performance, the team goes undercover as the Daring Dangers in Jack Haley's Circus. They're on a mission to solve high-tech thefts during the circus's European tour. Red Arrow is still suspicious, sniffing around for a mole. Interpol's Faraday thinks Haley might be the mastermind behind the thefts. Then we'll talk after, but we will talk. Another city last week, another tech firm robbed, another stop on your tour. The team sets a trap, but whoosh, a fire-breathing thief turns into a blaze. The real villain? Parasite, disguised as a circus clown who can absorb powers. After a rooftop chase, Parasite slips away, leaving the team to puzzle it out. Switching to superhero mode, Robin cracks Parasite's plan to hit the large Bosin Collider in Geneva. Trail of destruction, this way. They confront him, and with teamwork, they foil his black hole plot. As Red Arrow starts doubting his mole theory, the team says goodbye to the circus with one last show. And guess what? Ailey admits he knew Robin's secret identity, but the show must go on. In usual suspects, the Hall of Justice is buzzing. Superman's announcing new Justice League members, Dr. Fate, Adam, Plastic Man, Icon, and Red Arrow. Inside, the team too is welcoming their latest member, Rocket. Suddenly, they're off to stop Cheshire with a mysterious briefcase. It's Jade. Cheshire. Agreed. But focus on what she carries. But wait, it's a trap. Riddler and Cheshire spring an ambush with some super scary apocalyptic tech. It's a wild fight, and Superboy even loses his cool. But phew, they nab the baddies and the briefcase. That was close. Back at the hall, Batman's proud, discussing the villain's use of bio nanotech. Then it's confession time. Superboy talks about his Luther DNA and power boosting shields. So the Injustice League was just a distraction. You two have been behind everything from the start. Artemis reveals her family's dark secrets, and Miss Martian shows her true white Martian self. The team's trust grows big time. But hold on, there's more. 
Superboy and Artemis, and Miss Martian play a clever ruse, defeating Luthor and his gang with the team's help. Back at the hall, a shocking twist. The Red Arrow was the mole, tricked into helping Vandal Savage control the Justice League. Red Arrow wakes up, realizing he's been the bad guy without knowing. Savage watches the sunset, his evil plan all done. Talk about a mind-blowing ending. In old acquaintance, Red Arrow is in a pickle, dodging mind control Justice League members. But phew, he makes a narrow escape. At the cave, the team's just back from a win, but Batman has some jaw-dropping news. Red Arrow is the mole. The clone was pre-programmed with a drive to join the Justice League, which is why he was so angry over any delays to his admission. But wait, there's a twist. He's a clone from Cadmus, programmed to sneak into the Justice League. No way, everyone's reeling, especially with the real Roy Harper's fade up in the air. What'll happen next? When Red Arrow's cornered, he spills the beans about being Sportsmaster's puppet. Now the team's got a new mission. Cure the Justice League members brainwashed by Vandal Savage using some sneaky Starro tech chips. They launch an epic raid on the Watchtower, curing League members left and right. But it's tough. Superboy and Robin need kryptonite and smarts for Superman and Batman. Zatanna has a hard time with her dad's helmet, and Artemis and Kid Flash face their mentors head on. Apologies, my king. As the new year dawns, Savage and Clarion poof away. The team's won and love's in the air for our young couples. Superman wraps up by embracing Superboy as family, sharing a secret identity, but the League and team are left puzzled. Six League members' actions during Savage's control are still unknown. The mystery deepens. In Happy New Year, Justice League members are still puzzled over their six superheroes' lost time. Meanwhile, Superboy's in a messy chase with Clayface in the sewers, but his teamwork with Ms. Martian and the new Robin saves the day. Oh, and meet the newbies, Beast Boy, Blue Beetle, and Bumblebee, who just missed the sewer showdown. Back at base, the old Robin, Nightwing, is showing off his moves against Lagoon Boy. And oh, the new member is dating Miss Martian now. Then an urgent call from Captain Adam. The UN's under attack. United Nations headquarters is under attack. Beta's only two blocks away. Enter Lobo, the super tough bounty hunter, wreaking havoc in the building. New team members Wonder Girl and Batgirl jump in, but Lobo's just warming up. Plot twist, the Secretary General is a robot with an alien inside. The Justice League gather for a briefing where Adam Strange, the Star Lab's brainiac, shares his alien encounter and the Krilodian threat. And I found myself transported halfway across the galaxy to a planet called Ran. Nightwing's got a plan. Hit the Krilodians on Earth and Ran. Robin leads Gamma Squad to a watery Krilodian base in New Orleans rescuing abductees and escaping an explosion. Meanwhile, Zeta Squad's off to Ran for more alien action. What a way to ring in the new year. And Earthlings, Superboy, Miss Martian, and the always peppy Beast Boy land on Ran, where they're introduced by Adam to local geniuses, Sardath and Alana. But oops, Earthlings aren't the favorite on Ran, all thanks to some Justice League mix-ups. They immediately take action, finding a big Krilodian base. Sneaky time. Six Zeta platforms? Not for long. These are small target explosives. They plant bombs and play hide and seek with the Krilodians. They quickly get away, but wait, there's more trouble. Mechs are hot on their heels. Amidst the mayhem, Superboy and Alana chat about love. Surprise, Superboy is the one who ended things with Miss Martian. Perhaps she regrets leaving you for him. She didn't. I dumped her. And Beast Boy is wrestling with some past memories. Just when they think they're safe, the Krilodians nab them. But our heroes are tough cookies. Superboy and Beast Boy turn into action stars, wrecking a Krilodian ship. Ms. Martian uses her mind magic, but leaves a Krilodian leader catatonic, which disturbs Superboy. Will they ever make up? And alienated, Zeta Squad's back from Ran with intergalactic gossip. Turns out the six unaccounted Justice League members went on a wild rampage on Rimbor, and now the Krilodians are seeking revenge. That's why the Krilotanes came. The League itself brought Earth to their attention. I don't know what to say. Later, Miss Martian helps Batman interrogate a baddie, finding out about a Krilodian meetup in a volcano on Molina Island. Meanwhile, Superboy is still not cool with Miss Martian's mind torture tactics. Then it's mission time. The Justice League and team face off against Krilodians and their mechs on the island. Big shocker, Aqualad's turned bad, joining his dad, Black Manta. In a wild twist, a bomb ticks down and Superman tries to save the Krilodians. Boom! The island blows up. 
Superman survives, but feels super bummed he couldn't save everyone. After the explosion, everyone's reeling, especially over Aqualad's betrayal. Black Manta's now with the light, and the accused League members are off for a trial in space. In Bloodlines, Nightwing's knee-deep in Krilodian mysteries, especially this metagene thing. When whoosh, in zooms Impulse, a lightning-fast, fun-loving kid who claims he's Flash's grandson from the future. My name's Bart Allen. You know, grandson of Barry Allen, the Flash. He's a laugh, zipping around, playing tag with Beast Boy and Robin. But hold on, Impulse is dropping superhero secrets like they're nothing. Meanwhile, Cheshire and Red Arrow are on a mission with Baby Leanne to find the original Roy Harper. Cut to Central City, where Impulse crashes a family get-together, surprising Barry and Iris with news of twins on the way. Then out of nowhere, the villain Neutron starts causing trouble. Impulse joins forces with Flash and Kid Flash, outsmarting Neutron with some super speed smarts. Here's a twist. Impulse secretly uses a mysterious pill to stop Neutron, trying to act all nonchalant about it. Over in Tibet, Cheshire and Red Arrow find the real Roy Harper. Frozen, but okay. <sighs> Baby Leanne's giggles make this reunion extra sweet. Back at the cave, Impulse intends to return to the future, but his time machine goes kaput, stranding him in the past. In the future, his pal Neutron is concerned. Things haven't changed much, Mount Justice is still in ruins. Will Impulse ever get back, or is he stuck here for good? In depths, Kid Flash is stressing big time about Artemis going back to superhero duties. She reassures him with a kiss and heads out, hero mode on. At Superhero HQ, things are a bit tense between Superboy, Miss Martian, and Lagoon Boy. But hey, they've got a huge task at the Kennedy Space Center. The covert op to safeguard the first Earth Mars ComSat. There's Superman and Martian Manhunter. Actually, Superboy and Miss Martian undercover are making a splash. They're keeping up appearances to protect a rocket launch. Night falls, and Artemis and Nightwing are on lookout. Superboy and Miss Martian are flying high, while Lagoon Boy is not too happy about his underwater role. Meanwhile, Black Manta and Aqualad are up to no good with a missile launch. The launch is counting down, tensions rise, and boom, missiles. In the chaos, Aqualad strikes Artemis down. Miss Martian, Superboy, and the others are heartbroken. But surprise, it's a ruse. Artemis's death is part of a secret plan with Nightwing, Kid Flash, and Aqualad. I take it our ruse was successful. Almost too successful. The team and the League are in mourning. He's gonna go undercover with Aqualad, using a charm to change her look. But how will this risky plan unfold? The suspense is real, folks. The four of them are deep in this tale of deception and secret hero plans. Then before the dawn, Blue Beetle finds himself in a tough spot captured by the alien Reach, who are really curious about human superpowers. That is, since it fused with this host body. The team is on a mission to rescue other teens from the Reach's clutches. It's an all-out brawl as they face off against these intergalactic foes. Things get intense when Miss Martian probes Aqualad's mind and uncovers the truth, leaving her shocked and Aqualad catatonic. Meanwhile, the other heroes are struggling against the powerful Black Beetle. Then Impulse drops a bombshell by Jaime's potential dark future. Talk about drama. I came back to the past to stop you from betraying the human race and bringing on the Reach Apocalypse. In a heart-pounding battle, Blue Beetle goes head-to-head -head with Black Beetle. The situation gets critical, and Blue Beetle is blasted into the sea. After a nail-biting rescue, the heroes regroup at the Watchtower, planning their next move. Meanwhile, the Reach is playing nice at the UN, but the team knows better. In the fix, Artemis, disguised as Tigress, is super sneaky. She takes down the villain Simon with a dart before he can fix Aqualad's brain and spill their secret. Smart thinking, Artemis then cleverly suggests capturing Miss Martian to help Aqualad, but Black Manta ups the ante by bringing in Deathstroke. Meanwhile, Miss Martian's busy making sure Green Beetle's a friend, not a foe. Green Beetle is on our side. He spills the beans about the Reach's fruit drink. It's secretly tracking people with superpowers. Things get tricky in Chicago. Tigress and Deathstroke set up Miss Martian and Lagoon Boy. Next thing you know, Miss Martian's captured. On the sub, Black Manta orders Miss Martian to fix Aqualad's mind. You are here to psychically repair the damage you have done to my son's mind. But it's a total mess. Artemis and Miss Martian have to work together to piece back his mindscape. They're making progress, but Black Manta is planning something sinister for Miss Martian once she's done. Watch out, Miss Martian! 
In war, six Justice League members are in a courtroom far away, standing trial for some big oopsies they didn't mean to do. Everyone's talking about the Reach showing up on Earth. Martian Manhunter and Jon Stewart are super worried. The Reach is bad news. Back home, Captain Adam tells the team about something massive near Rhea. It's the war world run by the tough guy dictator Mongol, who's dreaming of ruling the galaxy. Mongol has determined that the surest way to take back his world is to first conquer the entire galaxy. Earth, under Reach's control, is a threat to his plans. With everyone spotting the war world next to the moon, panic spreads like wildfire. At the UN, the Reach ambassador acts like Earth's saviors, but Mongols determined to push with his plan. Earth's destruction. Dr. Fate, Rocket, and others leap into action, blocking Mongols' missiles. The team launches an all-out attack on War World. Beat the Watchtower! We've been spotted! The War World knows we're here! But While Mongol dreams of ruling the galaxy, let's show him the power of our community. Smash that like and subscribe, and join our universal fight for Earth's future. Seriously, it's simpler than dodging a cosmic missile. Now back to the intergalactic tension. They're fighting hard, and Bumblebee's smart moves shut down the War World's power. Blue Beetle finds a key crystal, but then, bam, he betrays his friends, knocking out everybody. In a shocker, the Reach Ambassador is actually happy about Blue Beetle's betrayal. With the War World still a big threat and a traitor among them, Earth's heroes are left reeling, facing a new enemy from within. What a twist! In complications, we're diving deep into underwater schemes and space mysteries. Black Manta's getting antsy with Miss Martian's slow healing of Aqualad. You know, Manta plans to kill me as soon as I've cured his son. But wait, little does he know, his son's fine, and they're all secretly plotting to rescue Miss Martian. Up in space, Nightwing's puzzled about his missing team. He interviews Blue Beetle at the War World, who spins a story about surprise abductions and boom tubes. Hmm, is there more to this tale? Back under the ocean, Sportsmaster and Cheshire are sneaking around, bent on revenge for the deceased Artemis. Things get wild when Cheshire crashes the party, a big brawl kicks off, but gets paused by Miss Martian's mind magic. She spills the beans about their undercover gig, shocking Sportsmaster and Cheshire. Aqualad did not kill Artemis. Over at the War World, Nightwing's detective skills hint at a betrayal. Meanwhile on the Mantis sub, it's a whirlwind of fights, psychic twists, and quick getaways. Black Mantis over the moon seeing his healed son. But hold on. The celebrations cut short as Miss Martian and crew make a close escape. In the end, Cheshire tells her mom happy news about Artemis, but Nightwing's not celebrating. He's watching a TV broadcast of the Reach Ambassador praising Blue Beetle as Earth's hero, and Nightwing's sure there's more to this tale. In Summit, it's like a who's who of baddies. Black Beetle and Deathstroke welcome the big players to a secret villain meetup. The Reach, with their top scientists and troops, face off with Earth's delight. Starring Vandal Savage, Ra's al Ghul, Black Manta, and company. But that's not all, Aqualad and the disguised Artemis are in the mix too. We are so in over our heads. Tensions rise as the Reach Ambassador questions the light about their blunders. Then boom, Ra's al Ghul outs Artemis, and the room explodes into chaos. Black Beetle's fuming, and Deathstroke takes aim at Aqualad and Artemis. But here is the catch it's all part of a sneaky plan. Aqualad and Artemis are fine, and they reveal their epic trick. You are watching this, then your summit is truly over. Suspense is building. The team jumps in, ready to rumble with the villains. The place turns into a wild brawl, but where are Vandal Savage and Clarion going? They sneak off, leaving the rest in chaos. Black Beetle ditches the ambassador and escapes with the scientists. When the dust settles, the team's tired but standing tall. They've won this round, but the war world, now in Vandal Savage's hands, speeds away. Earth's still in a tricky spot, with more battles ahead. In Endgame, the Justice League trial ends in a guilty verdict, despite Icon's best defense. Miss Martian, Superboy, and Adam Strange bring evidence to clear their name, but they're too late. On the Reach flagship, Black Beetle wants to leave Earth, but they've got hero trouble right there. Aqualad, Blue Beetle, and Green Beetle show up for a fight. You are I am sufficient. Black Beetle's super tough and knocks out Green Beetle. In court, the League's trying to bargain their way out, while on the ship, it's a Wild Beetle battle. Blue Beetle finally beats Black Beetle, but the Reach's plan to destroy Earth is already happening. 
Heroes all over Earth rush to turn off Reach devices, causing chaos. Lex Luthor gives them a virus to help. Is he for real? Lex Corp has developed anti-reach software, a virus that should disable their magnetic field disruptors. And they stop all but one device. In a dramatic moment, Flash, Impulse, and Kid Flash team up to stop the last disruptor. Oh no! Tragically, Kid Flash vanishes in a flash of energy, saving the world but breaking hearts, especially Artemis's. Still, the team spirit is strong. Batman tells them they're to operate out of the Watchtower, side by side with the League. And the twist? Vandal Savage meets Darkseid on Apocalypse, starting a scary new alliance. What'll happen next? In Prince is All, Aqualad's taken charge, sending Alpha Squad to Mars and Beta Squad to LexCorp. Big missions are afoot. We need proof. Business as usual. Tragedy strikes on Ran. Black Lightning tries to stop a metahuman, but it ends in a young girl's death, leaving him overwhelmed with guilt. Meanwhile, the Justice League is in a heated debate about metahuman trafficking and Lex Luthor's UN antics. Batman's fed up with the League's restrictions and dramatically quits, inspiring some other heroes to do the same. Nightwing's uncovering more metahuman experiments and finds clues leading to Markovia. Over there, the royal family is in chaos after a super fast assassin strikes. In the midst of this, Superboy pops the big question to Miss Martian, and she says yes. Black Lightning, weighed down by guilt, considers hanging up his cape. But Nightwing convinces him to join one last mission, teaming up with Tigress and Superboy. In Royal We, at the United Nations, there is big news. Some Justice League members have quit due to UN restrictions, and Secretary General Lex Luthor is not happy about it. In Markovia, Nightwing and Tigress sneak into a royal reception with fake IDs. They're on a mission to find connections to the royal couple's mysterious death. For some reason, has taken a low-paying job at the Markovian Children's Hospital. Maybe he just likes kids. Or the metahuman trafficking. Meanwhile, Superboy and Black Lightning uncover a secret lab with kids in pods and a broken mother box. But wait, Count Vertigo and Plasmus show up, leading to a dramatic sewer chase. In a hospital, geneticist Simon X lures Prince Brian and Markovia into a trap. Nightwing, keeping tabs via a bug, learns about it from Tigress. She also learns from Black Lightning about Bedlam's shady dealings and Superboy's capture. I was following orders. I'll confirm that, believe me. The episode ends with Brian and Superboy in pods for metahuman transformation. Helga appears, suspiciously activating Brian's metagene. Oh no! An eminent threat, we see Beast Boy, Garfield Logan, as a star. He's chatting in an interview about his love with Queen Perdita and his worry over metahuman trafficking. In the shadows, guess who's there? Tigress and Black Lightning rush to save Superboy. If Vertigo's helping Gregor take Markovia, it's a good bet Gregor will help Vertigo take neighboring Vladiva in return. While a disguised Nightwing sneaks into a morgue and overhears a sneaky plot, Count Vertigo and Baron Bedlam are up to no good, planning to control Markovia and Vladiva. Suddenly, bam! Plasmus attacks, but then Halo Girl jumps in with her shining aura, turning the tide. So glad you didn't listen, uh, Halo Girl. A big fight breaks out, but our heroes manage to escape. Delam grabs some security footage and frames Brian for the mess in Markovia. Outside the lab, the heroes face Vertigo, X, Henshi, and Plasmus in a heated battle. Just when you think it's over, Lightning's newfound powers come just in time and Plasma switches to the good side. At the Royal Palace, Brian confronts Delam in an epic metahuman showdown. Gregor sees Delam's lies and orders his arrest, but there's a catch. Gregor also tells Brian he has to leave Markovia, blaming the metahuman chaos. The episode wraps up with a tragic twist. A Markovian man mistakenly kills Plasmus, thinking he's a monster. The heroes are left feeling unsure about what to do next. What'll happen now? Stay tuned. In Nightmare Monkeys, it's a roller coaster of emotions for Garfield Logan, aka Beast Boy. He's shining bright with his acting skills in Space Trek 3016. Then Gretchen Good, the big boss at Good World Studios, drops by. She talks about Garfield's mom and her old show, which makes things a bit nostalgic. Hello, Megan at Magic? It only lasted one season. Your mother's show was underappreciated. Meanwhile, Nightwing meets Victor Stone and digs into Halo's adventures and Superboy's theory about mother boxes being more than just tech. But things get tense when Victor's father box part freaks out at the sight of Sphere. 
Thankfully, Halo tries to soothe the situation. In a fancy hotel room, Garfield tries out Perdita's good goggles, and whoa, gets a sneaky injection. Suddenly, he's seeing things. Ghosts of heroes on the Space Trek set. Then, his Doom Patrol Go family reminding him of some really tough times. But wait, did you catch that? The entire set is an homage to Teen Titans Go. And here's the cool part. All the main characters from that series lent their voices to the members of the Doom Patrol. Plus, extra surprise, the Doom Patrol isn't just any show, it's a real gem set in the vibrant DC universe. Back to the action. Perdita finds Garfield out cold. No, 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 no. and calls in Miss Martian and Superboy. Inside his mind, Monkey, a magical being, reminds him of his hero journey and his awesome animal powers. Megan tries to help, but it's Garfield who finds the courage to deal with his loss and wake up. Once awake, Garfield figures out something big. Gretchen Good is one of the villains. What's her plan? Let's find out. In True Heroes, Nightwing interrupts the Halloween fun with urgent news about Tara Markov, aka Tara, stirring up Ryan's determination. But hold up. Violet, also called Halo, must stay with Victor for safety. They zoom off in their bio ship, where Nightwing drops a bombshell. Garfield Logan learned the hard way that the goggles were designed to test for the Medici. Those VR goggles from Good World Studios, they're not just for fun, they're testing for the Medigene and brainwashing people. New mission alert, bust those depots. The action shifts to an abandoned mall, which is secretly a metahuman fight club. Disguised as guests, the heroes spot Terra in a tough battle. Like ninjas, they rescue her, and their bio ship, now a limo, makes a stylish exit. Back at Happy Harbor, things get intense as Victor's tech starts freaking out. He goes wild, lashing out at Helga and Violet. But fear not, Violet's on it, using her powers to soothe the tech chaos. The team isn't done yet. They head back to the mall for a daring rescue. It's an epic superhero showdown, and their teamwork shines bright, making the mission a huge success. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Everyone's safe back at the harbor. Victor's tech troubles? Gone, thanks to Violet. But here's a twist. Tara sneaks a text to Deathstroke. I'm in. Dun dun dun. In first impression, Beast Boy, aka Garfield Logan, has a bright idea at the team's HQ. He wants to form a public superhero team, free from government control, to inspire hope against Lex Luthor's shady influence. Bad guys like Granny Goodness and Baron Bedlam are capitalizing on all of it. Aquaman, formerly Aqua Lad, isn't too keen on it at first, but he warms up to it. The new team, featuring Beast Boy, Kid Flash, Static, Blue Beetle, Wonder Girl, and Geoforce, gets a cool new base, sneakily funded by who else but Gretchen Good. Talk about style. Cut to Brooklyn, we're out of the blue, Reach ships suddenly attack, and a girl live streams the mayhem. The team, including a grand entrance by Aquaman, springs into action. Oh my gosh, I think that's Garfield Logan! Garfield Logan is in Brooklyn! Ah! Their fight against the Reach ships becomes a viral sensation, turning heads even in the league. But oh no, Mayor Tompkins, under Luther's sneaky influence, orders the hero's arrest. Not cool. Tension spikes where they reach Warship's rival and the mayor's refusal to call the league. The heroes cleverly escape and jump back into the fray, with Blue Beetle skillfully grounding the Warship. In a surprising move, the Good Samaritan Law stops the mayor from arresting our heroes. And then, in a live stream to the world, Beast Boy makes a bold statement. We are all outsiders. What'll happen next? In Overwhelmed, the Justice League is back from space, having fought against metahuman trafficking. They've saved refugees, but now they've caught the eye of the bad guys, the Light. Lex Luthor, a member of this shady group, is cooking up something new. Big news hits the airwaves, Cyborg is the new face of the Outsiders, and Gretchen Good's double life is out in the open, stirring up a media frenzy. The blame for this deep space meta-trafficking squarely on the back of media magnet Gretchen Good. On a personal note, Will Harper's got Valentine's plans with Artemis. But emotions run high and old. Memories resurface. Artemis, fueling a whirlwind of feelings, goes on a soul-searching trip to Limbo, seeking closure with her lost love, Wally. Meanwhile, Brian Markoff, aka Geoforce, is grabbing headlines. While his siblings deal with royal family drama and sneaky texts, Forger, feeling out of place, finds a new home in Geranium City, a sanctuary for unique beings. Allow me to reintroduce myself. I am Double X. 
As these stories weave together, Metron takes Violet, Victor, and Leanne into space, hinting at their important roles in a big space conflict. And hold on, Baron Bedlam breaks out of prison with a nasty plan, throwing Markovia into turmoil. Through it all, Artemis finds her inner peace, realizing life must move forward. She and Will agree to value their friendship over romance. What a heart-wrenching episode. My heart goes out to Artemis for enduring such a profound loss. It's a poignant reminder that in the face of grief, moving forward is often what our loved ones would have hoped for us. With that spirit, let's continue with the story. In Nevermore, the Outsiders are on a hush-hush mission in Markovia, but Lex Luthor and Deathstroke are watching, expecting Terror to betray them. Big twist, Batman's keen eye has already uncovered Terror's double agent role. I bet Waller would love to get a brain implant in the Dark Knight. Indeed. But wait, is there more to Terra's story than meets the eye? Markovia's royal palace becomes an intense battlefield. Geoforce faces off against Baron Bedlam, and in a bold move, becomes King Brian of Markovia. Terra finds herself at a crossroads, but chooses her new superhero family over Deathstroke's dark path. Back in Metropolis, Lex and Deathstroke's sneaky plan unravels on live TV. Thanks to Black Lightning and Superboy, the United Nations is in an uproar and Lex's reputation plummets. We will soon change the international libel laws which allow these so-called heroes to Meanwhile, the Light meets to discuss their control over Markovia with Brian as a puppet king. Using Zviad's Bazovi's telepathy, Vandal Savage shares updates on his alliance with Darkseid, aiming for the anti-life equation, and noting Halo's importance. Is this the calm before another storm? After all the action, Black Lightning steps up as the Justice League's new leader. And guess what? Superboy and Miss Martian bring some romance back into the mix. The season ends on a high note, the Outsiders welcome their new members, King Brian ponders his kingship, and everyone celebrates their victories at Bibbo's dinner. They deserve a break. Pause for a second. Did you notice the ring our waitress is sporting? It looks strikingly familiar because it is. That's a Legion flight ring, straight from the 2006 Legion of the Superheroes series. With the show's flair for time travel, could this be a slide nod to what's coming next season? Let's find out. In Inhospitable, Miss Martian and Superboy, along with Beast Boy, head to Mars for their big wedding. They're warmly greeted by Miss Martian's sister, Emery, while some locals aren't too thrilled about their presence. Meanwhile, Martian Manhunter and Emery are working on a Zeta Tube project, but they're facing pushback from Rizetta, a conservative Martian leader. Yikes. I do not appreciate you talking about my nieces in that manner. Back at Miss Martian's home, tensions rise as Earthling presence stirs up local unrest. Her parents drop a bombshell. King Stern was murdered, plunging their society into chaos. As the Zeta 2 project nears completion, a telepathic assault on Queen Jarlia adds to the suspense. <laughs> Myla Fike, who was once Macomb, attempts to disrupt the project but is thwarted by Miss Martian. Martian Manhunter steps up to test the Zeta tube, but it all goes wrong. The tube explodes and Martian Manhunter vanishes from Miss Martian's mind. What a cliffhanger! In Needful, the drama unfolds on Mars with the Zeta tube explosion. But hold on, Martian Manhunter's fate is uncertain. And while suspicion initially falls on Myla Fike, Miss Martian isn't convinced he's a saboteur. I have to go with him. All three of us will go. Of course. We'll try to find out what happened here. Back on Earth, Martian Manhunter miraculously survives. Phew! But Earth loses contact with Mars. Luckily, Emery, the Martian tech genius, manages to briefly reconnect the two planets. But oh no, the Martian satellite is destroyed by a mysterious figure, cutting off Earth-Mars communication again. What happened? I don't know! The Mars Earth communication satellite! This leaves our heroes stranded on the Red Planet. Who's behind this devastating blow? Amidst the chaos, three mysterious heroes discuss the explosion's true mastermind. Meanwhile, Miss Martian confronts Mile LeBeck in Martian jail, seeking answers. After Prince Jam opens up to Superboy and Beast Boy about his father's murder, Miss Martian and Superboy plan their wedding. Suddenly, there is a cave in. Meanwhile, Malafak and Desaad have a sinister plot to use a gene bomb to eliminate two of the three Martian casts. Can this deadly plan be thwarted in time? In Involuntary, we wave goodbye to the bio ship as Miss Martian's memories stir. Sneaky Mael Faek hides a gene bomb in the Royal Arena. But guess what? Someone's watching, 
Miss Martian wants to make peace with Maleficent at the cavern, but he's just not ready to listen. I came to apologize. What? When I went to Earth, I never should have left you behind. Uh oh. Then it's party time at Prince Jam's, but it's not just fun and games. Our heroes are untangling a royal riddle. Who was really at the palace when the king was killed? They find a Gearun in disguise, deepening the mystery. That's it? That's his whole interview? We need to talk to this Carmang. Plot twist, Sira, the priestess, and Prince Jam's secret love story ends in a tragic magical mistake, causing the king's death. Sarah's arrest makes everyone question the Martian caste system, but then a dark figure adds a dangerous twist to the gene bomb. Superboy jumps into action, but tragically falls into lava with the bomb. The episode ends with a cliffhanger, Miss Martian's calls to Superboy go unanswered, leaving her heartbroken. In Nautical Twilight, Aqualad's still shaken up by Superboy's goodbye, but Nightwing tells him to take a break. No chance, off he dives to a big meeting in Poseidonus. The meeting starts, but hey, where's the Zebel delegate? I am certain the delegate from Zebel will join us by the time the conference proper begins tomorrow. Warren's like, let's call it a day, hoping for less drama tomorrow. But in a world of superheroes, is a day without drama even possible? Plot twist, Superboy's not gone. He's in a weird colorless place with a ghostly girl. Is it the afterlife or just a cosmic puzzle? Back underwater, the delegates are all talk about shiny cities and old squabbles. Then boom, Ocean Master crashes the party. But wait, a mystery hero in a hood jumps in, saves the day, and vanishes. Who could it be? Where's the man who saved us? Who was he? Meanwhile, Superboy and his new pal, Ghosty, are hopping across space rocks, chasing a warm trail. After the showdown, our sea heroes survey the damage with a question in their minds. Who is their secret hero, and what'll be their next move? In Beyond the Grip of the Gods, Rocket, Jay Garrick, the new old Flash, and Forger are off to a cosmic summit on New Genesis, representing the League. But look out, someone has stolen something in a warehouse in Supertown. The chase is on. Hmm. The environment has been charged with radion particles. Motherbox cannot track the thief. Meanwhile, Superboy is in a strange dimension, wrestling with his identity and haunted by visions of Lex Luthor. Spooky. The plot thickens when we find out the thief is actually a female forger bug. And this bug may be able to help us catch that bug. Do we know what exactly was stolen? She's swiped a super old and super dangerous radion powered ruction cell. The race is on to get it back. Forager talks some sense into female Forager about the gadget's danger. Rocket's quick to act and saves the day, but Orion, oh boy, he's not happy. His actions causes Rocket to become cautious of him. Hmm. And Superboy, he meets General Druzad in his trippy dimension. Is he a good guy or a bad guy? In Encounter Upon the Razor's Edge, Impulse, who's now Kid Flash, is fixing the bio ship in the Garrick's backyard. Time traveling Legionnaires, Saturn Girl, and Chameleon Boy are watching. But Kid Flash is smart. He wants the full story of their secret mission first. I I'm not even from this timeline. I'm a wild card, yo. A free radical. That's why you came to me. So, spill. Zoom over to Lorzad's time sphere. There's Mael Faak, also itching for details about his top secret plan. What are his true intentions? Hold on, now we're off to New Genesis with Green Lanterns, Tamari, and Kilowatt. But wait, Razor, the moody blue lantern, needs help. <laughs> It is as I feared. I am dead, and in the place of eternal torment. He's feeling pretty down, having lost his hope. Back on Earth, our Legionnaire friends spill the beans to Kid Flash. They talk about the Phantom Zone prisoners, trapped for ages and now set free. And Lorzon, oh boy, he's got a grudge against the Elf family and the Legion. Razor's in a lab, and guess what? He swaps his blue ring for a red one. Metron's manipulation makes him really angry, and he becomes a Red Lantern again. Things get messy, the Razor's journey to finding himself saves the day. Lorzad's grand scheme, he wants to bust his parents out of the Phantom Zone early and rule the galaxy. And Kid Flash, his tinkering unveils a cosmic treadmill. In Zenith and Abyss, Nightwing and the gang finally find Superboy in the Phantom Zone, but he's all mixed up, thinking they're just hallucinations from his zone sickness. Meanwhile at the Watchtower, Miss Martian meets Danny Chase, a cool 11-year-old with amazing powers, but a tragic past. He was a runaway. Abducted. Tested. Activated. Trafficked. 
Then, Prince Jem Jax drops a bombshell. Superboy might be alive. This sparks new hope, and the team turns into super sleuths. Back in the Phantom Zone, Superboy is in a pickle. Not sure who to trust. Then, boom! Drew Zod and Ursa show up, and it's like a superhero movie scene. Phantom Girl can't go back to the zone, but Tech Liz Danny says he can. I can't get you there, but I can guide you there. Maybe together? Sorry, no. Orion zooms in with a mother box, ready to outsmart those Kryptonians by opening the boom tube in Trombus, a red sun planet. In the zone, Nightwing tries a kryptonite move on Zod, but no luck. Time for a magical exit with Zatanna's help. On Trombus, the rescue team's all set, but then Maela Fike and Lord Zod crash the scene sending our heroes tumbling down. In Over and Out, Miss Martian and Superman's team face off against Mother Thrall, who's under Malefax's sneaky control. Then out of nowhere, Lord Zod pops in, offering the galaxy to his future parents, Drew Zod and Ursa. And with that power will come the true ascension of the House of Zod. But why? They zoom to Earth and snatch Superman's Fortress of Solitude. Sun-powered, Drew Zod and Ursa feel unstoppable. At the same time, Zatanna's team in the Phantom Zone outsmarts the Kryptonians with some clever moves while Miss Martian and the gang race through subspace in the bio ship, hoping to save their friends. At the fortress, Nightwing leaps into action, but whoa, it's frosty. Ursa acquires the Eye of Ekron, becoming the Emerald Empress. But what will she do with such power? Rocket tries a daring block, helping her team escape, but then, poof, she's gone. The bio ship, swooping in to help, is blasted by Ursa. Superman, the only survivor, is left weakened by kryptonite. Can he recover in time? Big twist. The Zods appear in Metropolis, controlling Superboy and a frail Superman. Drew Zod declares, Earth is ours now. Is this the end for our heroes? In the grand finale, Death and Rebirth, Superboy is in a real pickle on Planet Circle, clutching a kryptonite 6 Superman. He's tangled in Drew Zod's nasty web, ordered to take out Superman. The Superman failed to take his place as humanity's god. Can he do it? But wait, memories of his friends flash in his mind. Plot twist, Nightwing and Miss Martian pop up, saying, surprise, we're not dead. They're now planning to save Superboy and everyone else from the house of Zod. And her baby, the psychic ship, zooming in for the grand rescue. Now it's showdown time, but who will come out on top? Kid Flash makes a speedy grab for the kryptonite. Superboy's heart remembers the power of friendship and love, breaking free from Drew Zod's control. Hi. Hi. Is this the turning point? It's a mega battle. Superman and Superboy tag team, Zatanna waves her magic wand, and Miss Martian goes full psychic power against Zod's crew, Myela Fike, and the Emerald Empress. In a nail-biting finish, our heroes send the baddies back into the Phantom Zone. But sneaky Lord Zod dashes off in a time sphere. He's brought back to the site of the gene bomb explosion. In a twist of comic irony, Lore, thinking he's got to redo to outsmart Superboy, ends up getting toasted by the bomb, leaving nothing behind but an ash shadow on the cave wall. Back on Earth, guess what? It's wedding time! Superboy and Miss Martian finally tie the knot with a bang, and all their friends, both Super and Knot, celebrate. As the heroes party, Vandal Savage is already crafting a new malevolent plan. What could it be? With him, the game of hero versus villain never really ends, does it? Young Justice has been a thrilling ride of heroism and heart, leaving us with memories as enduring as the hero's legacies. But every end is a new beginning, and the adventure doesn't stop here. Up next, Batman the Animated Series. Dive into the dark streets of Gotham, where the iconic Dark Knight battles legendary villains, miss it, and you'll miss Gotham's greatest tales. Are you ready for the next epic journey? Tap into the night and join Batman now!